Next game on our list here is a Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition. Tell us about it, Matt. It's designed by Christian T. Peterson. The artist is Thomas Jedrozek and Henning Ludvigsen, and it's published by Fantasy Flight Game. I feel like we need to start having signs so I can be like, seven and a half <laughs> <laughs> on your pronunciation. I don't even know if you're right. So I'm, I'm, I think I actually did his name pretty good. I think you did too. Yeah. It sounded good. Yeah. So the Game of Thrones, the board game, this is the second edition. I'm assuming this was out before the mo or the uh, TV show, strictly based on the artwork and stuff. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, you mentioned before, it is the same from their, uh, their LCG. So they might've just been like same stuff yeah, using, using, the, the, same using art. the same art and stuff so yeah because everybody's like what are these what are the banners they don't look the same and i'm like what's different about them because i haven't seen a lot of the show except for the first season but mm -hmm. uh so we're not going to go over all the rules for this game i'll just kind of explain it i mean this has been out for a while so it's not no reason diving super deep but essentially you're going to take the the role of one of the six houses they start on what is it westeros Yes. Right. You have a map of Westeros. You're going to start in a, a different. A very big map. It's a pretty big map. Yeah. It's, the board is pretty large. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start in one of the areas, such as, you know, Stark's going to start up in what? Winterfell? Is that what yes. it's called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, all the different, the six. Who all? We got We got Greyjoy. We got Winterfell. Or, sorry, <laughs> Stark, Greyjoy. Lannister. Lannister, Baratheon, Tyrell. Martell. Martell. And Martell. Which one did we not play with? Because we only played this five players. Martells. Martells. Gotcha. <clears throat> So the way the game kind of progresses is the fact that you're going to be putting all these different order markers out and there are a few orders that are restricted by like a little star and there's these three influence tracks that, you know, the farther up you are on one of them, it allows you to play extra, the better, uh, you know, orders on your different regions that you have in control. And some of these actions are basically going to be like to move your, your troops from one area to the next and fight. You can gather power points or are they call power. Yeah. They're power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The power points you're going to use for various different reasons. And, and so there's other actions that you can do, but essentially it's going to allow you to try to take control of, you know, more areas and such. And the whole point of the game is there's these strongholds and keeps. Right. And they're all worth one victory point. You're trying to get seven victory points. So you're running around the board trying to take over areas to get these strongholds or keeps, which will also give you um, more ways to get basically the income or mustering. Not really an income, but there's a, a, a time when mustering will happen where it'll get you no more troops. So the more strongholds and keeps you have, the more guys you're going to be able to basically spawn. Mm -hmm. And you're going to run around and try to get seven victory points. <clears throat> um and then after everybody's kind of did all their stuff, you know, all their different actions and you go through the five phases of the actions, there's five different actions, I believe. Yeah. Five. Then you're going to go on to, there's these three decks of cards and you flip over three of them, one from each deck. There's a one and two and a three. And it, you're going to do the first card first, which will usually be something that allows the player who owns the iron throne, which is one of the influence tracks. Whoever's the highest up on that will get the iron throne token. They'll get to do something cool or maybe, you know, everybody gets to muster, or, you know, whatever. It's like a little event, basically. And then the second card will have pretty much the same kind of thing. And the third card will have, you know, usually you can't play certain types of actions for this next round or the wildlings will attack. Mm -hmm. So and and before that, uh, <clears throat> you, you count the wildling symbols to go up on this wildling track. If it gets up to the max, it'll attack. Yeah. Uh, after those, uh, well, one of those, uh, the, the second card may actually have players bid for the influence tracks. There's three of them. The first one is the Iron Throne, which is pretty much like player order. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, what else does it... They, the, they break all ties. Yeah, it breaks all ties. So, or they even choose to, who, who breaks that tie. Like even it, if they're not involved. Right. So uh, players are going to blind bid. They're going to take all their power tokens from behind their screen, and they're going to put their fist out with however many coins or power tokens they want. And then you're going to reorder the little tokens of the houses on that influence track based on who bid highest to lowest. And then the second track is where you're going to get the, uh, what's that sword called? Valerian so sword. Steel. Yeah. Steel sword. And for the most part, it's going to, you can, you can spend it during the round to give you plus one to a combat, or uh, it also allows you to break ties in that order of the track 
against other players in mm-hmm. combat. The third track is going to give you the Raven, which will allow you to look at one of the uh, the top card of the Wildlings deck to seek, or did I call them right? Wild, yeah. yeah, Wildlings. And to see what they might do if they do attack. So you, you want to, because when they do attack, everybody has to bid power. And if you, as a group, and then if, the, if they're defeated, whoever bid the most will actually get a benefit. If you don't bid enough as a group, you're going to lose and you're going to suffer a detriment. But whoever, whoever doesn't, whoever gives the least power towards the fighting of the wildlings is going to suffer the biggest detriment. Right. And then that's one round. You're going to play 10 rounds. Also, uh, quickly, uh, uh, there's a second action that uh, the rate, you know, whoever has, a, I think it's a quartz um, getting the raven, is after everybody has uh, turned over their um, orders, uh, they can switch out one of their orders. Gotcha. Yeah. So <clears throat> anyway, after you play those three cards or whatever, uh, and do what they say, then you go back to everybody putting their order markers out. You re- you flip them all over. You resolve them in the order of the type of token it is. Uh, everybody's going to do their uh, raid Rates. tokens first, and then move on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. But you do them in the player order of that first influence track, and then that's going to end a round. You move up the token again and you keep going. You do this entire thing over and over until one player gets seven points or there's 10 rounds to the game. When that ends, then you will, whoever has the most power will win. And then there's tiebreakers from there. So Mm -hmm. for the most part, it's dudes on the map trying to take over areas to get victory points. So Eric, we're going to start with you on this one. What'd you think of a game of Thrones, the board game, second edition? Yeah. uh, I liked it quite a bit. I, I do like the, I do watch the show. I do believe that, um, for people that have read the books or uh, are currently watching the show, have watched it in the past, I think they'll get a little bit more out of this game. Um, without uh, that, if I didn't know anything about Game of Thrones, I think it would be maybe a lesser game for me. But it adds so much because, you know, you, you do know all these different houses and you could kind of almost put it into into our game. You could be like, well, I'm the Lannister, so... <laughs> I always pay my debts. Um, so uh, let, let, let me ask you this: Staying on that topic, sure. The the houses. Who'd you play again? You played Lannister. Lannister, right? And Matt, you played. I played Baratheons. Okay, so of those two, did they play like as as close as they could to what they were in the show? I wouldn't say so. I mean, yeah. you are in the same location, so you're. No, no I, I would. I say expected you like just getting money for no oh. reason. And being rich, I guess right. it didn't happen like that. But well, I guess because there's no real money in the game, there's power. And the pa- there's I consider power, power the money, power. though. Yeah. That's true. That's what I'm saying. Well, no, I mean, some of your cards, uh, uh, I guess, like some your combat of your, cards, some of your combat cards, right, are, you know, might reference your characters a little bit more, you know. So, like the hound, you know, he gets more defense, or uh, uh, the mountain, he he has three swords where he takes out more people. <laughs> so got a little bit of fluff there, yeah. Right. So what did you think of the combat, actually? Uh, the combat is very deterministic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that you don't know is I'm, go- I'm going to play a combat card, and you're going to play a combat card, and, and there's maybe uh, uh, every card, or a lot of the cards have a certain thing that it might do. Right. So other than that, you kind of know going in if you're going to be winning or not. And you're, well, you're especially, gonna have to, especially if they've had like other cards, because you only get what eight combat cards, I believe. And as you right. play them, they go face up until you play your last one. Mm-hmm. Then that becomes your discard, and you get all the cards back. Right. And oh, well, I mean, some people have some cards they can play to get their their cards back in their hand uh, before all that, or at least I did. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, I never okay. really got to that. But mine was like, I'm pretty sure it's like if you lose a battle, you take all your combat cards back into your hand. Oh, oh nice. so that was pretty cool, but. I never really had to do that because I played Stark and I was up in the the north kind of just doing my own thing because no one was bothering me. It was too much for people to come to me. It was too much for me to go to them. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I feel like I'm a late game player. Yeah. I mean, which is fine, but I, I, I was starting to wonder that each faction, I wonder if they have like their one or two kind of idea strategies. That's what I kind of kind of heard like i would imagine yeah depending yeah because you always each house always starts in the same spot so you're always kind of against the same you know opponents that are closest to you yeah so you're gonna have to to you know make some treaties or temporary treaties (laughs) definitely temporary right (laughs) can't win together 
So on, on that note, I, I would say uh, that uh, definitely you have to play with people that are okay with, you know, confrontation and and maybe, you know, at one point you're going to have to stab him in the back a little bit. That's true, but I felt yeah. like there should be, I don't know if there's as much stabby in the back in this Game mm -hmm. of Thrones. I felt like Cutthroat, Ca or Cutthroat Kingdoms had more stabby stabby intrigue yeah. amongst players. I could see that. Because like this is, you don't have anything you can trade other than promises. Mm -hmm. You know what or I mean? Su like support, basically. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about the support thing, which is which could be really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it might be a blind side if you're like, you're going to support me here, right? And then they flip over, and it's like, <laughs> and then they no, turn no. their horses away, <laughs> and <laughs> right? Walk I, off into the distance. I'm going to raid that thing to help you there. Actually, I'm going <laughs> to make it harder on you. So yeah, I don't know. Yep. I mean, overall, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I don't feel like it's a game. Well, first off, I don't these type of games aren't my forte anyway. It's not my, yeah, same here, but, but at the same time, I feel like, um, I, I could play this a couple more times, but I feel like each time I play it, I would almost need to play a different house. So I don't, I don't know if I'd want to play the same house multiple times in a row. Right. Um, but I will say Matt, the thing that we were talking about, you should be able to muster on your starting area. Something. Yeah. Regardless. Because, uh, you know, my, the comment I made, about the game is uh, it's not necessarily richer gets richer, but it's definitely poor stays poor. <laughs> and yeah. uh, because you do have to bid for all them tracks and to be able to muster, like Tim is talking about, you have to have a certain, uh, the ability to use uh, a star, a starred, uh, uh, I guess, order token. Mm -hmm. And if you are too poor to bid above someone, you're going to be on the bottom and you get no star tokens and that's the only way to be able to muster. So you... Well, besides that, you're only going to... Uh, you, you have to wait until there's a vent card that lets you muster. Right. Right. That's true, yeah. So even if you... Right, yeah. I just felt like we didn't get that many guys throughout the game in comparison to other games that are like this. Right. Yeah, most of the time a... your biggest army size is, say, three or four. <laughs> yeah. And then all your other spots are like two and then one, one, one. And then right. you have like eight tokens on the map which is fine because it works out for the game it just i feel like i like games where you get a little bit more guys mm -hmm. a little bit more consistently yeah I, um i was fine with the uh, constriction of the uh, the armies i guess I, I assume it keeps you from doing the risk like just dropping a dropping, big army right. and running it through everybody yeah so you're not gonna do this in this game yeah. you're not gonna drop a huge amount of armies and and run through 10 it, territories it is far more calculated i think than risk is or right. other games because you really need to plan out what you're doing mm -hmm. and make sure that nobody else interferes or have them on your side. Right. right. And I would say that, um, doing something that's wrong, uh, or not wrong, but making a huge mistake actually definitely hurts in this game because you don't have a lot of armies. When you do lose your armies, it is pretty hurtful. So, yeah. uh, on this game, if you uh, make an attack from somewhere, and you lose, uh, you don't, you know, you don't typically lose all your armies, uh, so you can retreat, but you can't retreat from where you came. So if you can't retreat anywhere else, then you lose them all. Yeah. Well, either way, I thought this game was better than I originally thought it was going to be. Yeah, like I always wanted to play it. So it's cool that you busted it out, mm -hmm. but I always thought like, ah, we'll play it when we play it. Yeah. But I'm kind of glad we got, we actually got to play it. Like I yeah. wouldn't mind playing it again. And what our playthrough was like three and a half hours. Yeah, we were kind of surprised that how, you know. Yeah. Even though that's long, that was right. You know, it didn't feel that. And we talked that we, you know, oh, we talked quite a bit. We got distracted it, so. a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was but, uh, definitely the most distracted I think we've ever been on a game <laughs> like that. There was some fanboy stuff going on too. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, because you're right. There is a lot of stuff in the game that you know, if you're a fan of the show or the books. You know, because I've only read the book and, or read most of the first book and watched the first season. Mm -hmm. And still, I was looking out and seeing all kinds of cool stuff because most of it's in that first book anyway. Yeah, it, you're pretty much, uh, yeah, because it's right after uh, the one Baratheon Robert dies. Yeah. So uh, it, it's picking up right from there. Right. Um, yeah. It, it, you know, overall, the gameplay I enjoyed, you know, putting out your order tokens and stuff is, is fun. It, it's not as fun when you only have three armies <laughs> yeah. to play some around. But, and, and that's the only thing. I think the game just has a big learning curve sure. to learn because uh, I won't know. I now know what Tyrell is punt packing on their side. Man, that's, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a brutal card. Uh, there, there is one of the, uh, the card he's referencing is, <laughs> is basically when you go on tank, uh, if you win, 
uh, they get to retreat out. But when you retreat out, uh, you get routed, meaning that you get put on your side and you have a value of zero uh, when you're defending from that new territory. Uh, they have a card that lets them um, move their march order so they can make basically a second attack. If they win that second attack, they basically kill your routed troops. Yeah, they're pretty much going to march back into where you retreated your troops to, and those troops are just automatically dead. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, I think it just has a, a steep learning curve to kind of get what every house does and Which, know the cards. Yeah, I think that helps uh, maybe in, in future plays too because you kind of know what everybody has packing in their deck, you know. Has he used his uh, number four card yet, right. or has he used this special ability yet see at that point yeah there's one optional thing that we didn't add into the game and that's that randomized cards where you know everybody when you fight you kind of know i'm going in with five points you got six points and then we each put a card down and flip it over mm -hmm. but then there's those other cards where each player draws from the top of the deck and it kind of gives you either more variants one to three point or zero to three points uh, typically it's zero or one mm -hmm. and it also might give you a sword to cause a casualty or a defense to stop a casualty mm -hmm. or I think more swords and then it also has skulls that causes a casualty oh, regardless regardless of win or loss and the reason I brought that up though is because if you played with players who have played this a lot they're going to be able to card count really well mm -hmm. because I know exactly what this faction or house yeah. has. You have a two card and this ability. Yeah. You have these three cards, right? <laughs> you know, cause you get to see all the ones they've played earlier in their face up on the table and you can kind of thumb through them if you want, I guess. Well, that mm -hmm. was even happening in this play because uh, Melissa got to pick her deck up. I went into a battle knowing I couldn't beat her. Just, well, that's you true because she's got her most powerful card back. Yeah, but it, and it's uh, and it, it does get calculated in that sense, and it does make it kind of like, eh. you know, yeah. you can just be like, I know what the outcomes are is already. I wonder know? if people. I wonder what the uh, the split between adding that optional module is and leaving it out. I think if you're like really hardcore mm -hmm. and it's a whole group of hardcore people, leaving it out might be more skillful and strategic because you're think like so, right you. You're not always the first battle. You're not always playing that four. You might play that first battle and just bluff and throw out a two, you know, stuff like that. So that would be interesting. Hmm. So anyway, anything else? Final thoughts, Matt? Uh, no, I liked it. Yeah, I definitely uh, wanted to play it again. Oh, I think so, for sure. Oh yeah, I'm I'm down for playing it again. <laughs> yes. Well, that's Game of Thrones board game, the second edition.